the origins of this airline was really low cost. Bought the airline for a ringgit, 40 million debts. I said I have this idea of setting up a low cost airline so everyone can fly. And uh, we started AirAsia on December the 8th, 2001, with uh, the two planes there, 254 terrified staff. Our people is our biggest asset, and don't you guys forget it. We have created a lots of fantastic careers. And we made a lot of dreams come true. Places that never had a flight before. Revolutionize the economy. The innovation is what we are. We were about democratizing flying. Anything is possible, and we'll continue to cross the boundaries. All of you and many more of the all stars who are not here have changed Asia forever. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Air Asia. Ready for takeoff. Thanks. I'm a little bit overawed. I've never been on such a big stage before because we're a low cost airline. <laughs> and this is a high cost stage. <laughs> So I want to thank Oracle, who have been unbelievable in uh, making me feel so comfortable and uh, introducing me to so many great people and so much great technology out there. We're on this huge journey, so we hope many of you will be our partners along this journey, along with Oracle. So I, my dream was always to start an airline. You know, I told my father when I was five years old I wanted to start an airline, but you know, those sort of things that you don't believe is ever going to happen. But I came from the music industry. I was a keyboard player, and I was in the record industry, and actually I can play most instruments if you give me enough alcohol, and, uh, but really keyboards is my main instrument. And I worked for, I was an accountant by training, I hated being an auditor, and I wrote to every record company, and they all told me to go to hell, except for one, which was Virgin, and they also told me to go to hell after the interview. And then as I was walking out, Richard Branson was walking in. And I thought, you know, should I be a shy Malaysian and just smile, or should I grab this opportunity? And I think life is all about grabbing opportunities. And as Asians, we, we spend too long analyzing. Check with our grandmother, check with our grandfather, and then we don't make the decision, and then it's gone. So I said something about orangutans or something to uh, Branson, and he started talking to me, and he said, hey, you sound really interesting. Let's, let's have a cup of coffee. And then during our coffee, he said, you know, there's something really special about you. I'm going to give you a job. And that was my life changed in, in a few minutes. So if there's anything you take away from this talk today is grab your chances, grab opportunities. Don't think twice about it. You know, if you're sitting next to a girl that you fancy, ask her out because you may never see her again, okay? And then you live to regret it for the last time. So I had this idea to start an airline. I left the record business uh, because I worked for Time Warner. I uh, started at Warner Communications, became Time Warner, CNN came along, and then AOL. And that was just one merger too many for me. And they'd come up with things like EBITDA, earnings before everything you don't like and then called it cash flow, right? So I decided to quit, and uh, I left, and I uh, was sitting in uh, a bar in London, because I grew up in London, my parents didn't like me, they sent me to boarding school there, and I was you know, thinking about what am I gonna do for the rest of my life, and I saw this airline on TV called EasyJet, and a guy called Stelios, who owns the airline, was talking about it. And I went, yeah, I've always wanted to start an airline. I love Freddie Laker. I used to hang around at Heathrow Airport. I was a plane spotter. And so I went to Luton Airport, which was where EasyJet was based. And I saw people flying to Barcelona for eight pounds, to Paris for six pounds. And I thought, wow, I'm going to do this. 
Now, there's a very fine line between brilliance and stupidity. It's really very, very narrow, okay? Uh, but I thought, I was 35, if I failed, you know, I'll come back and be an accountant again, like Patra. And if I succeeded, why not? That's the second lesson. If you have a dream, just go do it. Don't worry about failure. Because you don't want to sit there at 55 and say, I wish I did it. Because it's too late. You can't press that rewind button. You know, you only live once. And if you fail, you can try and do something else. So live your dreams. Just go out there and do whatever you want. I've had spectacular failures. I owned a Formula One team that was a disaster. You know, I have a football team that's mm, <laughs> not so great. But hey, I've done it. I did it. And I love it. And if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, and there are many people in Singapore who'd like to drive that bus, um, mainly near Changi Airport called Singapore Airlines, uh, <laughs> then I would have lived a great life. I have no regrets. Okay? So that was, uh, oh. That was me and Kamruddin, my partner. We took over AirAsia on December the 8th, 2001. That was the receipt DRB Highcom gave us, one ringgit, 25 cents, um, to uh, buy AirAsia. And we had about four million of debt. Neither of us had any experience in the airline business. We knew nothing, we had no money, um, but we had passion. And uh, passion takes you a long way. This is very confusing. You have two screens here. <laughs> You're so efficient, Oracle. I gotta hand it to you. You're one slide ahead of me already. <laughs> Agile presentation. <laughs> Give a round to Oracle. <laughs> so that was the old AirAsia. AirAsia had operated for five years. It had a bird on its tail. You know, every airline is fixated by animals, right? We have lion, we have tigers. Actually, tiger should have been called pussycat. Uh, it was anything but a tiger. And now it's Scoot, another dumb name as well. And, uh, you know, you've got kangaroos, you've got all kinds of crazy animals. So, and if you think of the biggest brands in the world, which include Oracle, if I say Oracle, there's only one image in your mind, that. If I say Coca-Cola, there's only one image in your mind. If I say Nike, you've got the swoosh, right? So I decided to uh, get rid of the bird that I thought was facing the wrong way anyway, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, make AirAsia our logo. And I thought, why have two colors? You know, only have one color because I had no money as well. Let's, uh, let's paint it in one color, right? I really tried not to be red, because everyone thinks I want to be Richard Branson, but I have no intention to go to the moon. Uh, I mean, what would you do when you go to the moon? I mean, there would be no one from Oracle there. Uh, <laughs> to sell you more software. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have no intention to go across the Atlantic in a balloon, right? But we do like to have fun together. So, but red is a fantastic color, as Oracle know as well. And so I changed AirAsia to red. And that's what, uh, that's what the AirAsia looks like, right? Don't just look at the girls and the boys. Um, but it's amazing what you can do with a little bit of color, right? And um, Oops, that's SAP calling you. Uh, <laughs> so that's the beginning. They're going to really not ever invite me again, especially after the next slide. So here's AirAsia. We started. We're building this airline. I'm going to tell you about our secret. But I really can't believe that I'm here because believe the unbelievable, I signed Oracle. I never. <laughs> Never in my wildest dreams did I ever believe we would use Oracle. 
when I, when I was in San Francisco, we were driving up to see Apple and all those companies. I tell Benji, oh, that's Oracle. We'll never work with them. And drive along. So credit to Oracle. They've done a fantastic job. Uh, my CFO is so thrilled. Uh, I'm so thrilled. I've got to give uh, special thanks to Luik, uh, who called me up and said he's going to really make this the best. That's the man in the middle. And uh, we're on time. We're on budget. And I have a very happy group CFO uh, called Patra over there. Please stand, Patra, who's done, who was, <laughs> who was Oracle's number one supporter. So, you know, I always say believe the unbelievable, and this really is an unbelievable day to me that I am standing on stage selling Oracle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have said, every time I mention Oracle, I get a 10% discount. <laughs> so by the time I finish this speech, Larry Ellison will be paying me. Uh, OK, so um, go back to the, where am I? OK, so I mean, uh, this is all the corporate bullshit, but we've, uh, we've done a fantastic job. We've grown. I started with two planes. We now have 259 aircraft in 17 years. We'll actually carry close to 100 million people as a group this year, which is incredible. And we have 21,000 staff. But the most amazing thing about us um, as an airline is we don't have a single union in the 21,000 staff. We have never had an industrial action ever in AirAsia. Our culture is the biggest and most important thing about our culture, about our airline, and that's what I'll talk about. We obviously have airlines all over Asia, from Japan to India, and as a group now, we're the fourth largest airline in Asia. Only the three Chinese airlines are bigger than us, and they have an inherent advantage of 1.3 billion people in their country. Uh, so we've done pretty okay. And if you look further down the list, you'll see Singapore Airlines somewhere at the bottom. <laughs> okay. So uh, what, makes this, what makes this different? This is part comedy show today, okay? But there's a lot of serious content in here. Um, really our people. And that's the majority. When I was talking in the fireside chat earlier, you know, you can have all the greatest technology. You can have all the most wonderful things. You can have all the metal in the world. But if you don't have the right people, you're screwed. And that's what I've spent the majority of my time at. You can buy the best software. You can buy the best technology. But if you don't have the right mindset for the people wanting to use that technology, you're wasting your money as well. So my job is all about culture. My job is all about turning raw diamonds into diamonds, into making people know that they are our biggest asset. And they are our biggest asset. It's the biggest failure of the accounting profession that you can't value talent in the balance sheet. And the biggest strength of AirAsia is our talent pool. You know, we have um, so many heroes and, and heroines in our, in our company. Uh, you know, when I first started in AirAsia, I, I would do everything. I'd carry bags, I'd be a cabin crew, I'd do guest services. I knew how to change wheels on aircraft. I wanted to know everything. I thought. Too many CEOs sit in their office and never come out and know what's happening in the company, and I wasn't going to be one of them. But, and I don't do it very often now because everyone knows me and I cause havoc. But when I was carrying bags, I realized that we had so many smart people in our company that just didn't have money for further education, much smarter than, than myself. And so I said for our first cadet pilot program, I opened it up to everyone. I didn't care whether they went to university or Oxford or Harvard or whatever. As long as they wanted to have a, a go and they had a brain and they were motivated, we would give them a chance. And for our first 11 cadets, 18 cadets, 11 came from within the company. And um, there were store boys, there were guys who were in the accounts department, and there was one boy who carried bags with me from Cebu who had left school when he was 12. And he was super smart. And I said, you should be a pilot. And he didn't have money to even do the pilot school, so we funded it all. And 
he passed. He got the fly highest marks ever in Malaysian Flying Academy. And today, he's a captain on AirAsia. So you imagine you join to carry bags. Seven years later or eight years later, you're a captain in AirAsia. That's the power of AirAsia, that really we turn raw diamonds into diamonds, and we find talent that even they don't know that they had. And there are hundreds of examples of that. And we, I never understood. There were no female pilots in Southeast Asia. And I went to my chief pilot and I said, why are there no female pilots? And he came up with the most ridiculous answer that can never be repeated in public. And <laughs> I said, I own this airline. We're going to have female pilots. And I'm super proud. We now have 250 female pilots. As an airline, we, we have more uh, as a percentage of any airline in the world, we're one of the highest in the world. And the other day was history. Captain was female, co-pilot was female, all the cabin crew were female, chief engineer was female, head of ground service was female, and all the passengers were male. Uh, <laughs> that last bit's not true. <laughs> but it made no sense to me. Why exclude 50% of the workforce and AirAsia I just got an award here in Singapore the other day for global empowerment. But it's so logical. Why exclude 50% of the population? And our senior management has so many women in there, including Patra, who you just met. The story on the left is a fantastic story. She approached us and said she wanted to be a pilot. She was super smart. And I said, go for it. And she, be, uh, she easily passed to become a cadet. And then one day she calls up and says, um, everyone says I'm really beautiful. Can I take part in Miss Thailand? Interesting concept. I said, OK, if you win, we get to use your photograph for the rest of your life for free. And she won Miss Thailand. And she came fifth in Miss Universe. And now she's back in AirAsia as a captain. So we're the only airline in the world with a Miss Thailand flying for them. <laughs> OK? Beat that, Singapore Airlines. <laughs> okay. But the object of the story is, and that's her with Miss Universe, actually, because we sponsored Miss Universe and all the candidates flew on us. So it was an amazing story. But the amazing story is that she was able to ask me and Tassapon, the CEO, and tell, her, tell us her dream. There's no hierarchy. There's no... Um, thousands of forms to fill. Everyone can email me. Everyone can work chat me. Everyone can tell us their dream. And that's the power of the end. She worked for Thai International. She wouldn't even know the CEO. So that's kind of our power in AirAsia, a very flat structure. I dressed up today for Oracle. Uh, <laughs> generally, I'm very casual. And I do that because I, so I don't have a, I have a distance between me and my staff. When you have a suit and a tie, you kind of put a distance from your staff, but when you look worse than your staff, then they feel very comfortable. It causes me problems because they think I'm an illegal Im Indian immigrant from, <laughs> from somewhere, but I live with that, okay? So people, 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 your biggest asset in your company are the people in your company. I don't care what anyone says, and AirAsia is where it is, because of the amazing all-stars we have in our company. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know this slide was up. But we, we're also, I think of people as one, we were very bravado in advertising. We were never afraid to shout out about our brand. Marketing and branding is critical, okay? So Singapore never gave me a flight from KL Singapore. It took me seven years. I was blocked by Malaysian Airlines, and I was blocked by Singapore government, and it just went on forever. But we fought, you know, and when we finally got it, I did this ad for fun. I, you know, everything's Singapore girl, Singapore girl, Singapore girl. And so I said, there's a new girl in town. She's twice the fun and half the price. <laughs> and everyone knew us then. And if you look at the building, there's a skyscraper missing. That's Singapore Airlines Tower. Uh, that I raised from the ad. So anyway, now we're moving on to 
uh, our future. I think we have done an incredible job in building an airline. We did an incredible job in building an ancillary income business. But then I saw all these amazing companies that have come through in the tech world. When we started at AirAsia, we were the first airline to use the internet, we were the first airline to use social media. We were so far ahead of the legacy airlines. But then I woke up one day and I said, wow, we're so far behind all these amazing tech companies. They're more agile, they're quicker, they iterate, they are more consumer friendly. And I said, we need to catch up or we will die. Reinvent or you die. And I think at AirAsia, that's what we're good at. We keep reinventing, we keep relooking. So really, I want to disrupt the disruptors. And we have amazing data. And that's one of the reasons we're here at Oracle, because these are the companies that can help us harness the huge power that we have. And so I want to take our data, I want to take our brand, I want to take our ecosystem, and build new businesses. Um, Amazon started selling books, and now it's selling cloud space. Uh, so we believe, you know, Grabs started with rides, and now it wants to provide loans. So we're no different, and the tech world has democratized and allowed us to dream big and to come up with big ideas. Execution is what it's all about, but we've proven that we can execute in a very, very tough industry called the airline business against huge companies, yet have become the largest airline in, in Southeast Asia. So we have tons of data that we've spent the last few years putting together. We've worked with the Palantirs of the world and the Googles of the world and now Oracles to get all this data into a shape that we can use it, right? Because it was all disparate, it was all over the place, and now we put it all together. And then we're using the data to drive our ancillary businesses. We, we believe we can disrupt cargo uh, dramatically. We think there's going to be loads of social e-commerce. There are going to be loads of entrepreneurs out there who need to move their goods around Southeast Asia and cut out the middleman and be able to understand logistics and customs and all of that. No one has the network that we have. And so uh, we're very excited about cargo. We're very excited about blockchain. And this is another topic that we will hopefully work with um, uh, Oracle on. You know, a traditional cargo is 138 hours to uh, fulfill. We think we can do it in 12 hours. We can cut out many of the middlemen. We believe social commerce is going to be a lot larger than ride hailing. It's growing faster. That more and more people at home using Instagram, using Naver, will start becoming entrepreneurs. If you look at Taobao's live streaming, you've got one girl selling $2 million of clothes just using a live streaming app. But people still have to move the goods, right? You can do whatever you want digitally. You still have to move the goods physically. And that's why we have an amazing structure of 258 planes. We have lots of belly space, which doesn't include mine, by the way. This is going very soon. Um, and we're going to use that to drive e-commerce uh, more. So AirAsia.com is one of the largest websites in ASEAN. We have 65, 60 million uh, unique visitors a month. We do 16 billion ringgit, about 4 billion uh, US dollars of sales every month, uh, every year. But it is only AirAsia tickets. So it's time we start building a platform business and open it up. Uh, Big Pay is, uh, again, we want everyone to be financially inclusive, just like AirAsia. AirAsia, only a few people flew. And then I came up with a tagline, now everyone can fly. And uh, we think in the financial world, many of our people flying with us are ripped off by credit card companies on exchange rate, uh, are ripped off on remittance fees when they're remitting their money, their hard-earned money back home. And right now, you have to mortgage, you have to probably use your daughter or son to get a loan. Uh, and so it's really tough for small entrepreneurs and SMEs to get working capital. So big pay is going to provide that. And how are we able to be a virtual bank? It goes back to data. We have a huge amount of credit card data, telephone data, travel data, which will enable us to do uh, lending profiles really easily. And this is the beauty. So the two big platforms, AirAsia.com, 
will be opened up, which I'll show you in a second, and Big Pay will be our financial platform. And in between, we have our loyalty group, uh, Big Life, which is our points. We have 15 million members and probably the largest loyalty company in uh, ASEAN. So these are our three big platforms, platforms along with Cargo. And this will be the new AirAsia app, which will be launched on April the 8th, um, where we will not just sell AirAsia flights, we will sell other airlines. Um, we will sell hotels, packages, and there's a lot more coming. But you get the drift. I'm utilizing the platform to drive more business. I can personalize that platform because I know you. I know you. I'm watching you. Um, I know where you fly. I know what you like. I know who's your girlfriend, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? I know who's your mistress as well. So um, there we go. And Oracle is is the last piece of our puzzle um, in putting this together. And while we're just focusing on the finance side, we believe there are many, many areas that we can work with Oral, Oracle to really drive our business forward. Um, and I really I mean this tremendous amount that you've done a fantastic job and we're super excited. Finally, as an accountant, after 17 years, I'm going to get decent information from Patra um, that makes sense and is not in Thai. So, and there we go. So I've come to the end of my, my presentation, really. You know, I always say um, I'm seven minutes and three seconds to go. Uh, before I end my presentation, and like AirAsia, I will be on time. So, well, we're not always on time. But that's because of other things, not us. <laughs> but I want to thank Oracle for uh, inviting me. It's been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to our journey together and doing lots of things uh, together. I think one of the most important things in your relationship with a big company like Oracle is being transparent, sharing information, allowing them to come into your company so that they can see how they can leverage their expertise and technology together. In closing, I hope there are many entrepreneurs out there. You know, it's really tough being an entrepreneur, but it's the best thing because you can affect change and you can drive and you can affect careers and you can do so much more as an entrepreneur. So never, never kind of get stressed out. Because there are going to be bad days. There are going to be tough days. There are going to be days that you feel life is not fair. You know, I've been through every, every calamity known to mankind. You know, high oil, low oil, SARS, bird flu, tsunami, earthquakes, terrorism, everything. But there's always a way forward. Wherever there's a dark cloud, ah, cloud, there is... Uh, <laughs> an oracle cloud to save you. Uh, <laughs> so, well, you really have to pay me from now on. Uh, so, um, but as I say, with the dark cloud, there's always a positivity. And as a small company, you are nimble. And with tech, you have the ability to beat the big boys. Remember SARS? Do you remember SARS? Everyone thought you were going to die, right, when you flew. So every airline cut their flying. No one wanted to fly. So I'm a marketing and a branding guy first. So I went to my team and said, triple our advertising now. And they said, are you mad? I said, no, this is the best time to build our brand because everyone else is cutting their flights. And no one else is advertising. So the best time to advertise is during a recession because the first thing the CFO does is cut branding. Right? So I said, go out there and spend more. Plus, I knew Malaysians very well. If you put a fare low enough, they will risk their lives. Okay? <laughs> At 800 ringgit, I'm not going to KK. At 80 ringgit, who cares? <laughs> so there is always a way, entrepreneurs, there is always a way through problems. And I always say, believe the unbelievable, dream the impossible, never take no for an answer, and most importantly, have fun. Right? So here's an Oracle guy who we looked at his records, uh, Jasper, and he has flown to Pattaya 22 times in three months. I don't know what he's doing in Pattaya, <laughs> but this is the kind of data I know. 
I think he's married, probably not much longer after this speech. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he's so into Pattaya, I have no reason, no idea why. My CFO's name is Patra, but he called her Pattaya. Okay? <laughs> So we are watching you, Jasbir, and when you get divorced, you can thank me. <laughs> 58 flights per week to Pattaya. And finally, I got my dream. The man who gave me my break, Richard Branson, worked for me one day. Thank you very much, everyone. Mm.